Hello friends, I hope that you're well. Hope you're really enjoying the Philippines series at the moment. Don't worry, it hasn't come to an end, but I've been getting a lot of questions in the past couple of weeks asking about how to travel solo specifically. So I thought it would be a really good idea to do a whole Q&A dedicated to solo travel, hopefully gonna help motivate and encourage some of you to get out solo traveling. We're gonna cover everything in this video because I got a lot of questions. But before we start, I want to mention the t-shirt that I'm wearing. How cool is this? It says, Adventure Awaits. It's from a store called Breezily. He sent me this and a couple of other items which I'm absolutely loving at the moment. So appropriate for travel. And I'm not just saying this, but they are super, super soft as well. Really nice material. And I think they'll be amazing for my future travels. I compare them with pretty much most of my bottoms, which is fab. So thank you, Breezily, for the new clothes. And I will have a link to their website in the description below. Now, I got so many questions for this Q&A that I have categorized it. And the topics I'm going to be covering in this video are making friends, safety, loneliness, parents, convincing your parents, planning your trip and destinations, the beach situation, the best bits, the worst bits, practicalities, and a few other just social chatty topics to discuss. So first of all, let's talk about making friends whilst you're solo traveling. By far the most asked question. Good icebreaker tips when meeting new people. How do you meet people in a hostel and invite them out? How to get people to go exploring with you? How to make friends? How to easily meet people? How to find people to do stuff with? Specifically, how to approach people to join them to do things? How to introduce yourself to people in hostel rooms? Or if at all, when do you know such judge how to approach the backpackers? I want to solo travel, but nervous about making friends as something I struggle with. How do you meet people along the journey to travel with? How do you make new friends while traveling? Best way to make friends? How do you make friends traveling? I really want to travel alone, but I'm quite introverted. Any tips on sussing out friends? Going on my first solo vacation nervous about meeting people slash staying in a hostel, any tips? So I've actually made a whole video on how to make friends while solo traveling, which I will link up here, as well as an extensive beginner's guide to hostels where I really go into depth about all of this. But to give you a quick answer, my favorite and easiest way to meet people while solo backpacking is purely stay in hostels, stay in dorm rooms. Because when you're staying in a dorm room, you're sharing a room with someone, right? Anyone who's in there is your roommate. Therefore, you kind of have to talk to them. It would literally be weird and a bit uncomfortable if you didn't. So it's the perfect way where you're kind of forced to meet people and it's not weird at all to talk to strangers. I find the best way to approach is literally your first point of contact with that person. Either you're walking into the dorm room for the first time and there are people there, introduce yourself. Or if you're already in the room, someone walks in. In that very first moment, if you can, introduce yourself. That is not weird at all because you are about to share a room for the night. You're gonna kinda wanna know at least a little bit about each other. And you can say whatever feels natural to you at the time. So I would normally start with, hey, how's it going? I'm Christy. And if they come into the room and they're just looking super knackered and tired, you can be like, oh, hey, where did you just come from? And to go on from that, you can ask some questions like where they're from, how long they've been on their trip for, if they're traveling solo, if they've been to any other countries, how long they're staying in that particular hostel, what they've done in the area already, if anything. And from there, you can go on to well, hey, I'm about to go out for dinner here. Do you want to come with me? Or I'm going to go out for breakfast here in the morning. Would you like to come with? There are so many things you can say to a person who's in the same hostel with you. It's by far my favorite and easiest way to meet new people. But this is an interesting question. Making friends in hostels is all fine and easy, but how did you approach Cole on the beach? So if you've seen my vlog in Sikiho, um, I arrived in my hostel. No one was there. No one was in the living area. No one was in my dorm room. And I went to the beach with a specific purpose to make friends because I knew I wanted to go out exploring but I was like I want to go with someone so here's exactly what I did I arrived at the beach I laid down my towel for some sunbathing um, and for the first like half an hour I was trying to kind of make eye contact with <laughs> <laughs> with as many people as I could without seeming weird. I'm kind of just looking for any opportunity to start a conversation with someone. I wasn't having too much luck with this at first because obviously I didn't want to be intrusive or like Buddy the Elf, like, hey, my name's Christiane, what's your favorite color? Buddy the Elf, what's your favorite color for this? Like, do you know what I mean? You don't, <laughs> you don't want to be like that. So I noticed that there was a coconut man, a local man selling coconuts uh, on the side of the beach. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go start talking to the coconut man and see what we can do. So I did, I grabbed a 50 pesos and I walked over to the coconut man and kind of tried to start a conversation with him because he was saying like, do you want a beer or do you want a coconut? And I didn't even know that beers were on offer. And so I was kind of debating for a while whether it was kind of appropriate to have a beer at 11 a.m. <laughs> or whether I should just go with a coconut. Uh, whilst I was having this debate, there was this family behind the coconut man who seemingly found it quite amusing that I was struggling to make this decision and were throwing in their comments and opinion of what I should do. And so in my head, I was just like, yes, 
these people are talking to me. This is my in, this is my way of making friends. <laughs> so I got a coconut from the coconut man, very nice man indeed. And I started just chatting to this family and I tried to make the conversation grow from coconuts and beers. They were absolutely lovely. And there was this young couple who were part of the family and I found out that they were doing their own little backpacking trip away from the family. So I started chatting to them for a bit about where they were going and where had they been and what they'd done so far in Siki Hall. A really good way to start conversations is asking for recommendations, especially if you know they've been here for a couple of days and you might get something good out of it as well. Anyway, so I was chatting to this couple for five to 10 minutes or so and mentioned the fact that I wanted to go to Kamigin because Kamigin was not an overly popular place for backpackers. Just so happened that at that time, Cole was kind of walking behind and his ears pricked up because he wanted to go to Kamigin. So he just wandered over and he was like, did you say Kamigin? <laughs> and then suddenly Cole was part of our conversation and I started chatting to Cole and I said, well, what are you doing today? And he said, well, I think I'm gonna go to Salagdoon Beach and explore. And I literally just said to him, oh, well, do you mind if I come along? And he was like, yeah, of course, I was gonna go by myself. And that was quite literally it. A friend was made, a plan was made, and off we went to the beach. And yeah, my plans to make friends on the beach had worked. And to lead on from that question, what happens if I wouldn't have met Cole? How do you get over actually doing things alone? I always feel self-conscious being alone. Do you ever find it weird or uncomfortable seeing place alone when traveling? So I have kind of got used to being alone because obviously there are times where you literally don't have anyone to hang out with because there's only so much you can try to make friends. Like if I had failed to make friends on the beach that day, I probably would have just gone back to my hostel or gone to a waterfall something by myself and just kind of dealt with it. If you haven't noticed, I do much prefer to meet people along the way and travel with them. I just think it's so much more fun to experience things with other travelers that you meet. And I find that I learn so much from traveling with other people and I really enjoy getting to know other people. But yeah, sometimes it's not possible. But the mentality that I always try to have and take over my brain is you are in an insane part of the world. There's so much to explore. Get out there and go do it and go see it. And it's normally on these days where I end up taking more photos. For me, it's not as fun to be by myself, but you can still have a really good time by yourself and just be amazed at the place that you're in. I might also try to do some sort of activity where I might be involved with other people if I know I've got the day to myself. If it's a day tour of something or a walking tour, or maybe I'll go rent a surfboard or it really just depends on where I am. But it's at these times where I really try to channel my independent woman and feel good and feel liberated at the fact that I don't need friends to travel. Best ways of making friends while out and about, how to make friends aside from the basic couch surfing hostels. So like I said, when I was trying to meet someone at the beach, I was just trying to make any conversation I could that was still natural. And there are so many things that you can say to people. And I find that when you're in backpacking, destinations and there are other travelers there, you've already got that common ground of you're both away from your home countries, you're both traveling the country that you're in. So there's gonna be some inevitable questions that you can ask people like, where are you from? How long have you been here? Where are you going next? What's good to do in this area? Have you been here a while? And I've started up these kind of conversations on public transport, on the plane, if you're sitting next to someone in a cafe, or if you're sitting near someone on the beach. The worst thing that's gonna happen is that they don't wanna talk to you, but you feel that vibe pretty quickly and then you move away and move on. You should never push a conversation with someone, but you should be able to tell from their body language, the way that they're answering your questions. If they're asking you any questions back, you should be able to gauge how they're feeling about this new friendship that you're trying to form. The next topic we've got is safety and solo traveling, another very requested topic. And once again, I have actually made a whole video on staying safe for solo travelers, which I will link up here. But let's delve a little bit deeper into your questions. What to do in a situation where I feel unsafe? How do you keep yourself safe whilst being a solo young female traveler? When you feel in an unsafe situation, how do you handle it and reassure yourself afterwards? Do you feel safe traveling alone as a young female? I want to go chat solo traveling, but a bit scared. How do you stay safe as a woman traveling alone? Do you ever get a bit scared slash anxious being a young female on your own in a foreign place? How do you deal with situations that make you feel the need to go to the comfort of your fam? Do you ever feel unsafe? especially when you travel at night, is it safe to travel off the beaten path? Whew. To put it simply, for the most part, I feel very safe when I solo travel. That's because one, I am very rarely by myself. Two, if I am by myself, I'm normally on some sort of mission, like in transit doing something. And when you appear more confident to the people around you, like you kind of know what you're doing and you've got a goal in mind, they don't bother you as much. You're less likely to be seen as a target. Also, many countries are not as unsafe as you think. The media likes to 
let you know that most countries that are not your own or another Western countries are not safe. And it is so not true. If you are sensible, have your wits about you, you're looking after your valuables, you're respecting the culture of the places that you're in, and you've done your research of the place that you're in, which you should have done before going, especially if you're going solo traveling. You are really not any less safe than what you would be at home. You hear of the terrorist attacks going on in London, in New Zealand, countries which never in the past have been considered unsafe. And I'm sure in your home countries that you go places by yourself all the time and you don't even bat an eyelid, you don't think, oh, it's unsafe to go outside today. Absolutely not. There's a lot more things that I can say on this topic, but please do watch my video about staying safe while solo traveling, where I have lots of other tips. Also, any videos that I'm linking up here, I'm also linking down in the description. How do you do the nightlife? Is it dangerous to go to parties on solo backpacking? Safety tips if you still want to enjoy the nightlife side of things. So personally, when I'm solo traveling, and it's actually exactly the same if I were to be at home, I will not go on a night out by myself. The most I will do by myself is go to the bar of the hostel that I'm staying at that might be downstairs. But if I'm going out of my accommodation at night, especially if I'm gonna be having a few drinks, I make sure I'm always going with at least one other person who I have met that day who I think seems like an alright person. I also don't bring very much with me on a night out. I normally just bring enough cash with me that will get me some drinks, entry into wherever I need to go and also a lift back home should I need it. I normally do bring my phone in case of an emergency and then normally I'll need some sort of key to get back into the hostel which I'm staying at. But I don't bring anything else, that's to minimize the risk of losing it. I will have my valuables locked away in a locker at my accommodation. Also, don't get so drunk to the point where you can't look after yourself, but I feel like that should be a given. Is it safe to go traveling solo if it's the first time you've ever properly traveled? Would you recommend solo travel if it's your first backpacking slash long-term trip, would you recommend solo traveling if it's also your first time abroad? So yeah, I actually don't see why not. Yes, it may well be more daunting for you if it's your first time abroad and you're solo, that's like two double whammies. But neither thing should be something that you're stressed about. If you are really worried, maybe start off your trip doing a group tour, even if it's for just a few days, because then you know that you're gonna be meeting a bunch of people that you can trust from the get-go. You're gonna have a tour guide who can tell you everything about the place that you're in and can probably give you future travel tips for wherever you're going. And it may just help you settle into the place that you're in and make you feel a little bit more comfortable about going forward in the future. How do you know it's not safe to make friends with certain people you meet? red flag. This is an interesting question because this isn't really something that I specifically think about like, oh, that's a red flag, I can't hang out with this person. And I think it's because if you're getting a bad vibe from someone, it's quite obvious straight away and you are you don't feel comfortable in their presence and that's okay, you don't have to hang out with them. I actually think it's perfectly acceptable if someone's trying to hang out with you and you're really like, I don't like this person, it's perfectly okay for you to say, hey, I'm traveling solo and I really wanna do this by myself today, so I hope you have a great day and maybe I'll see you later. Something like that. But red flags specifically? I'm just trying to think. Maybe if I meet someone and they're commenting on my appearance more than anything else, I'm like, mm, I don't really wanna hang out with this person if that's all they've got to say. First of all, it's boring. It can potentially be rude. And you don't know if their words are gonna escalate into other actions, so actually, yes, I would say if that happens, it kind of is a red flag. And also, I find especially when you're out on the streets in Asian countries, you might get people trying to speak to you, and when they start asking where you're staying, do not tell them where you're staying, unless you're about to get in a tricycle or a taxi ride and you need them to take you to where you're staying. But if they're just a random person on the street, don't tell them where you're staying. Now tackling the issue of loneliness. Definitely something that happens while solo traveling, unfortunately, but it's inevitable. Again, I've made a video that I'm actually really proud of up here talking about what to do when you feel lonely while solo traveling. So highly recommend giving that a watch. I've had questions. Solo travel and loneliness. How do you cope with loneliness? What do you do when you feel lonely? Is it lonely? How do you not get lonely? How do you deal with being lonely when there is no one to be friend? What do you do? How do you deal with loneliness when there really are no people to hang out with? Do you ever feel alone when traveling solo and how do you avoid being lonely? Tips for fighting loneliness or homesickness if the feeling comes back every day of the week. Do you ever get lonely? Do you meet people in every hostel? So yes, I recommend watching that video but to give you my quicker answer. Getting lonely is very common when you're solo traveling, especially if you're gonna be gone for a longer period of time. But what I have to say is it's okay to feel lonely and it's okay to not be okay because this feeling will not last the entirety of your trip. 
But what I do recommend is that when you start to feel lonely, to change something up. Change up your location, change up your hostel, make yourself busy with things to do. What I really like to do is give myself some sort of purpose. So I might go to a class or a lesson or take a course of some description, make what I'm doing there worthwhile. So even if I haven't met anyone, I'm making the most of being in that location on my trip and I'm giving myself value for being there. Because not only will that distract you from the loneliness and hopefully bring you up out of it, but also it's more opportunities to meet people and make friends. Often there are loads of people in a hostel, but you might not click with any of them. And then you feel really lonely because you're like, oh, I'm different. I don't get along with any of these people. And it's not your fault and it's not their fault. It's just the way it is. But that's not gonna be the case in every single place that you go. So just know that yes, it may well happen that you get lonely, but you can get yourself out of that. If you don't get dorms, how do you not get lonely? I can't sleep in bunks. So actually most hostels have private rooms as well as dorm rooms. I personally love dorm rooms just for the social aspect. But if I didn't like dorm rooms, I would probably book to stay in a private room at that hostel because then you can still hang out with people in the common areas, get involved with the activities that the hostel's putting on. Oh, you've got your own space. I think that's a really nice compromise. I want to solo travel, but every time I spend more than a few days alone, not seeing friends and family, I get really lonely. Is solo travel still a good idea for me? I'm a massive introvert, 90%. How can I solo travel as I'm not confident with strangers? If you are super introverted, then yes, making friends will be a fair amount more difficult, especially when it comes to approaching people. And I think my best suggestion, if you don't want to be by yourself, but you want to solo travel, in this situation, I would do a group tour. So welcome to travel, Top Deck, Contiki, G Adventures, Intrepid Travel. There's a bunch of others as well that pretty much go to everywhere in the world, with different lengths of time, and you are guaranteed to be with a group of people who are like-minded, they want to do exactly the same thing as you. You've got a tour guide who's taking you to all of the best spots, and you're still technically solo traveling because you've come from home completely by yourself, but you're gonna be hanging out with people straight away without having to particularly go out of your way and outside of your comfort zone to make friends. So to kind of contradict that and go against what I'm saying, I think it's one of the most life-changing and socially beneficial for us as humans to push ourselves outside of our comfort zone, especially when it comes to being social and making friends and doing something that which feels so unnatural. Because yeah, it might not work at first, but when it does, what a feeling and what an achievement that is. And I think you grow so much as a person by putting yourself through these challenges. And I think it's really important that we all aim to do this. Not enough people put themselves outside of their comfort zone. They live in the comfort zone and you don't grow from staying in the comfort zone. <laughs> now let's talk about parents. Oh, parents. Why do you not trust us to do anything by ourselves? How to come parents that their only daughter is traveling alone and might die? How do I make my parents agree on a solo trip? Did you have any problems convincing your family it was going to be safe? How do you convince your parents, especially your mum, to let you go solo travel? How did your parents feel about you going solo? How would you deal with unsupported parents when it comes to traveling solo as a female? How often should you communicate your family itinerary to your family so they know you're safe? How to make your family understand that you need to travel solo? How your parents slash family always supported your travel lifestyle? Again, I've already made a couple of videos on this with my friend Charles. One was the benefits of solo traveling, which you can present to your parents. And the second is addressing all the concerns that your parents might have. My parents, especially my mum, she's always worried when I go solo traveling. Even now, when I told her I was going to the Philippines by myself, she was worried. She was like, oh my God, is it safe there? Are you gonna be okay? You gonna have fun? It's natural for parents to be like that, but you're an adult and your parents can't stop you from solo traveling. So my suggestion is to put together a little presentation for your parents, showcasing to them the benefits of your solo travel, address any concerns that they might have and assure them what you're gonna do to let them know that you're okay. In my case, I would message my mum and dad when I was in the Philippines once every few days to once a week normally just to let them know where I was staying, what I was doing, how I was getting along um, and in particular if I knew I was going to be going anywhere where I had no signal for a few days so I went on an island hopping expedition where I knew I would have no signal for three days. I messaged my mum before that and I was like just so you know I'm going to be off the grid for a while so don't freak out if you try to message me and I don't reply. There's nothing wrong, that's just what's happened. And let them know your expected time of arrival back where you are going to have service. At the end of the day with your parents that is the best that you can do. You just need to prove to them that you are independent enough to go and do this. Talk about times where 
you've been places, even if it's just, I don't know, like an event or something, by yourself. Look, mum and dad, I've done this and I can do this. And I feel confident in myself and I'm excited about this new adventure and the things that it's gonna bring to me. And I really think that that's the best that you can do because if your parents are still not accepting or not letting you go, does that mean that they just don't trust you? Okay, so now let's talk about planning your trip and the destinations. How do you book your accommodation, plan ahead or go with the flow? Is it advisable to book a hostel as you go instead of pre-book and travel to Oz? What do you look for in an accommodation as a solo traveller? What do you think works best, spontaneity or planning? Being flexible plans but also keep yourself safe knowing you have a place to stay. So my method of planning when I know I'm going to be going on a solo backpacking adventure, which has worked for me so far, is I will do as much research as I can of the country or countries that I am visiting. I do this by looking at YouTube vlogs, uh, blogs, reading Lonely Planet guides, and whenever I see something that I really like the look of, or if there's a recommended hostel or a recommended company or activity, on Google Maps I will make a star, and I might also have a whole note section in my phone just full of recommendations and things to bear in mind and stuff like this. And that's how I do my research. And then I will look at the amount of time that I have in that country, if I know the amount of time, and the amount of money I have so that I can roughly plan an itinerary. Something that like would be realistic, but I don't actually book anything unless it's my very first accommodation in the country and I already have my flight booked. I'll make sure I've booked that and I'll also make sure I've booked anything where I know I'm definitely gonna be there at that time. So if you know you have a flight, and that you're gonna be wanting to stay in that town that night of the flight, I will book that accommodation. Anything where there's no reason why I shouldn't book it, I will book it. As for the rest of the trip, I will go with the flow, but I will always try to book my accommodation either the morning of or the day before, just so I know that when I arrive in the next destination which I go to, I've got a specific accommodation which I'm heading to, I've already looked online at the reviews, I know it's a recommended place, I kind of know what I'm getting into, and also I know the location of it, if it's close to other things in the area that I might want to do, so I basically just best prepare myself as possible without booking far in advance, and I find that for me, that is the best way to do things and it's what works best for me. It's only really on occasion where I find myself arriving somewhere where I haven't booked accommodation and to be honest I've never really had trouble finding accommodation on the spot but it is a little bit more of a faff because you might find yourself going from place to place and it all just drags out of it. Best place for a first time female solo traveller, best slash safest countries to start travels in, where do you suggest your first time solo travelling, best places to travel solo, is there any places or countries you specifically would or wouldn't travel solo, best place to travel as a solo traveller, what is the most solo travel friendly country you've ever visited, best destination for solo travellers if you only have uh, two weeks to travel, what do you think is the best trip to take for your first solo trip? I mean the first one that springs to mind for several reasons is Australia. Australia is a western country so it's very easy to get around. There are hostels all the way down the east coast, there are so many solo travellers. You could also start on a tour like Welcome to Travel, which I still have a discount code for. It's BB50 and you can get $50 off. And that's in Melbourne and you can spend a whole week getting to know friends, ticking a bunch of things off your bucket list, getting really set up to head up the east coast or elsewhere in Australia by yourself, knowing you've got that support network of the people you've met in that first week. Also, Australia is amazing for so many cool things that you can do. And there are a lot of first time solo travellers there, so that's 100% the first country that pops into my mind. I also think it's incredibly easy to solo travel many places across Southeast Asia, like Thailand and Vietnam. I found the Philippines a really easy one to solo travel as well. The reason I don't say those at the top of my list though is because if you've never been to Asia or if you've never been to a developing country then there may be a culture shock or you may not be familiar with the food. The public transport is generally good but can get a bit confusing and is not half as reliable as public transport in other Western countries. So I think you will run into more difficulties traveling places like that, but arguably they're more fun because they're so adventurous and they're also so cheap so you can keep going for longer. Solo friendly destination in Europe, best European destination for solo travel. I haven't done much solo travel in Europe if I'm honest, so I'm not the best person to answer this question, but the first place that springs to mind is Budapest and other Eastern European countries. I think if I was going to Europe by myself, that's where I would go first. How do you pick your next place to visit? Is it based on how well female solos can travel? It actually, it is, because there are a lot of places which I would love to travel, like absolutely love, 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 
but I don't want to go there by myself and I want to cover the countries right now in my life as a 25 year old before I settle down have kids I want to go to those destinations which are best to travel solo so right now like the top of the bucket list is like South America I would love to do South America as a solo backpacker the rest of Indonesia I would love to do the rest of Indonesia as a solo backpacker but there are some destinations for example the USA some countries in Africa countries in the Middle East and Japan and China where I, for some reason, I know I'm gonna have at least some people in the comments telling me that you've traveled these countries solo, and that's great, but I don't wanna travel those kind of countries solo. I just feel like that I would enjoy them more with other people. So I would love to travel them one day, but they're pushed later back, they're, they're less of a priority. Where was the first place you traveled solo? The first place I traveled solo was New Zealand back in 2013. I'd been traveling with my friends around Southeast Asia for a couple of months and then they were off to Australia. I had recently traveled Australia not long before that so I decided I'd go to New Zealand and it was the first time I was ever gonna be by myself and I did the Kiwi experience which is like a hop on hop off bus around the whole country and it was the best thing I think to integrate me into solo traveling because it's almost like a tour it's a very flexible tour because obviously you can get on and off it as you please but for the most part it's the same group of people traveling around on the same route of the bus and so you're never alone but you still do have that flexibility I honestly think it was the best thing that I could have done to integrate me into solo traveling without being too overwhelmed. So someone's also asked, do you think the Kiwi experience would be good for a first solo trip? Absolutely, that's exactly what I did and I really recommend it. What do you do when the friends you make on travel wish to go a place but your itinerary doesn't? This is a very good question. So you have an itinerary in your head but you've met some people whilst you're traveling and they're going to a place that wasn't initially on your list. There are two ways to approach this. So the first question I would ask is, oh, where are these people going? Is it something that I've just never heard of before? Could that be a really good destination to go? The second question would be, do I have time? Am I able to go? there is it logistically possible for me and my trip if those two things are yes then yeah I don't see why not to go with those new friends to that new destination if the answer to one of those questions is nah it's not looking so good and it doesn't and it means that I probably won't be able to do other things that I wanted to on my trip I would probably stick to my own itinerary but stay in touch with those friends that you've just met because it may mean that you can catch up with them at another point on your trip and that's actually what happened to me quite a few times in the Philippines I'm going to Southeast Asia with my friend she is unsure should I order my own ticket and go solo potentially yes I really think you should try and convince your friend as much as you can because obviously if this was the initial plan it would be really lovely to experience these things together but say to her or him whatever happens I'm going book your ticket you may well find that when you get to this point of actually booking your friend might go oh well I, I don't want you to go and me not to go and then they might book their ticket as well but don't let the fact that someone else isn't going stop you from going. And this is the scariest thing, but this is one of the biggest reasons which I do solo travel is just because no one else can come with me, but you still have that ambition to go and explore those places. And there's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't do it just because someone else doesn't want to. The next topic, the beach situation. How do you keep your stuff safe when you leave it on the beach when going for a swim? How do you keep your belongings safe when you go swimming at the beach by yourself, leaving your things when you swim? What if I don't have a moped? Swimming at the beach by yourself, where do you keep your bag? Tips on how to leave your stuff when you go to the beach or stuff like that. Where do you leave your bags and valuables when you go swimming? Where do you leave your stuff while at the beach? How do you go swimming if alone you leave your stuff unattended? This is such a popular question. I get it asked all the time and honestly it's kind of different every time I go to the beach I don't think I have figured out the perfect solution I try to take as little things as I can to the beach but it depends on how close I am like if the beach is super close to my hostel I will just go to the beach with nothing but a towel and maybe my GoPro to take some pictures if it's not quite that simple you're a little bit further away you're getting a need to have your phone and your camera and things then it gets a little bit more tricky. I highly recommend having a dry bag like this. I got this one in the Philippines. You can literally buy them anywhere in Asia though, or in any country, even in Australia. You can go to Kmart or Big W. You can order them off Amazon. It's a dry bag. You can stick your stuff in here. You roll the bags up. Um, I'm not doing it very well right now. You roll it up tightly is the best way to do it. And then you clip it here. And it basically means that every single thing that you put in this bag 
is 100% waterproof. This one doubles as a backpack, so you can actually stick it on your back. You can swim with it. I never actually swim with this, um, but I do often put my stuff in here when I go to the beach. And then if I go for a swim, I'll lock it away because it's not exactly an easy bag for someone just to delve into, for starters. If I do leave the bag unattended, then I try to make sure that I kind of have eyes on it at all times, so I might go for a swim and every, I don't know, 10 to 20 seconds just have a look back, is the bag okay? I've seen some hacks online where you have like this empty sun cream bottle which you have sliced open with a knife and then you stick your phone in there and then pop it back on and then it just looks like a bottle of sun cream so you can just leave it on your towel. I've not tried anything like that, but maybe something to think about. I think in the past I've also done things like I've had my phone, but then I've just stuck my clothes in a bundle on top of it. I'm not saying that this is the best solution or that this is the safest option, but it's not just like leaving it out for everyone to see. You can also get those waterproof pouches. And I do see when I'm backpacking, many people swimming with these because you can stick your phone in. You can actually take pictures with that on and then it takes it through the screen because they're like completely see-through. I see a lot of people swimming with those. They're 100% waterproof and probably a very good thing to bring to the beach because you can stick in there your phone, your money, your key card, but it's not as big as this. So it doesn't completely restrict you from doing the swimming that you want to do. If I'm honest, I think I should really invest in one of those things. And I think that they're probably the best option when it comes to having valuables at the beach and wanting to go for a swim. Now let's talk about the best bits. What do I love most about solo traveling? Best part of solo travel? What's your favorite things about solo travel? I think the freedom and the liberating feeling is the best thing about solo travel. The fact that you can be completely selfish, you don't have to compromise for anybody. You literally just do whatever you want. You're in charge of your own decisions and whether you realize it or not, when you're at home, that's often not the case because whoever you're with, you're making a compromise with them. So it's a really liberating status to solo travel and just do whatever you want in amazing destinations around the world as well. I also think that you're more approachable. I get approached more by other people, which is really nice. I get the opportunity to be the person that I've always wanted to be. I'm always trying to better myself as a person and sometimes if I'm surrounded by people who I already know, uh, it can be hard to change your ways because you might be embarrassed about what that person might think of you changing up the way you're being or you might get teased for doing certain things that you wouldn't have before. But when you're solo traveling, no one knows you. So no one's gonna judge you on anything. Everyone sees you with a completely fresh pair of eyes and you can introduce yourself, you can be whoever you want to be. And especially for some people who are usually a bit more shy when they're solo traveling, this is really cool because you can pretend to be really confident. You can pretend to be the confident, charismatic person that you know you've got inside of you, but you're just too scared to do it normally. And you're too scared of what people might think of you. But that doesn't happen when you're traveling solo because no one knows you. And the best destination I've been to as a solo traveler, um, Philippines is 100% up there, as is New Zealand, as is Central America. I think I just have the best time when I'm solo backpacking. And I always think that those places are my favorite because I always end up having the craziest adventures. It always ends up being the most spontaneous and unexpected adventures, which is so cool. And the worst bits. I couldn't do the best bits without doing the worst bits. Hardest challenge while solo traveling, biggest challenge traveling part of solo travel. the worst part of solo travel for you? What do you consider to be the most difficult part of solo travel? The hardest part, I sometimes describe myself as a raging extrovert. As much as I enjoy solo travel, I always like to do things with people. And so I think the hardest part is when I haven't found any friends to hang out with for the day and I've got to do it by myself. Those are the times when I am most outside of my comfort zone. But I'm always grateful for those circumstances when they do happen because I'm always learning and getting better at dealing with it. And I think it is just something that just takes practice to get used to dealing with. It's so bright. There we go. Is that a bit better? Do you sometimes find yourself fed up with getting to know new people while traveling? What do you do when you are not motivated to socialize slash tired of traveling? Do you ever feel exhausted from meeting new people every day? Yes, absolutely. It tires me out. You may have noticed that uh, I'd say maybe like once a week in the Philippines, I would book myself into a private room. Cause as much as I love staying in dorm rooms and meeting other people and being surrounded by other people, 
it gets exhausting and I don't get anything else done. I don't get any time to myself, like in my head. And so my way of dealing with that is literally just just for one night, sometimes two nights, depending on how I'm feeling. I'll just put myself into a cheap private room, aim to not socialize and just kind of recollect, especially like in the evenings, I'm happy to meet up with people in the day, every day. But in the evenings, you just want to unwind, have your own space, get a takeaway and just be introverted for the evening. Yeah, for sure, I have that. How do you deal with anxiousness or anxiety while traveling? Hmm, this is something that I have struggled with in the past. I have not made a specific video on it yet because I don't exactly know how to deal with it, if I'm honest. When I suffer from anxiety when I'm traveling, it's like my world crumbles a little bit and it always passes. Um, you forget that at the time though, when you're feeling anxious, you literally feel like your world is crumbling and you're not entirely sure what to do. My only advice is just to keep going. You will come out of the state of anxiousness and anxiety if it means booking yourself into a private room so you're not surrounded by all the people in a dorm room, then do so. Look after yourself as much as possible. Eat good food, don't eat a load of shitty food. Definitely don't go on nights out and drink alcohol or take anything because that's just gonna make things so much worse. Try and avoid caffeine. Just be nice to yourself. And that's kind of what I try to do. And it's not gonna make anxiety go away straight away, but just be as kind to yourself as possible. Change location, go somewhere which makes you just feel like calm and zen. Maybe book yourself into some yoga classes or something. But like I said, I haven't made a video all about this yet because I'm still trying to figure it out myself. What's your biggest anxiety when starting out solo traveling and how did you cope? <sighs> the first time I went solo traveling, so this was when I did the Kia experience, I didn't really have any anxieties. I was actually really excited more than anything because I was like in New Zealand by myself. I remember arriving in Auckland and just leaving my hostel and going out shopping for the first time and being like, I'm by myself no one knows that I'm right here, right now. And 19 year old me got very excited about that. I was just like, I feel free. So if you can, try and turn your anxiety into excitement and see how you go with that. Moving on to some practicality questions. The practicalities of traveling solo. Best advice for taking pictures and filming whilst alone. How do you take photos of yourself that aren't selfie when solo traveling? How do you take the pictures that do not all have the same selfie pose? This is the trick to this you ask someone else to take a photo of you, but before you do that, you offer to take one of them. So you're out in some nice destination and you're thinking to yourself, I really want a photo here. So you spot someone else and you see them taking photos and you go, hey, do you want me to take a photo of you? If you want, you can throw in that you're a photographer, whether you are or not, because then they're like, oh yeah, okay. So you take a photo of them and you can figure out how you want your shot to look when you do it. Take a bunch of photos of them, really go for it. And then when you give them their phone back, be like, can you do the same for me, please? And then, and then, and you can show them exactly what you've done for them and be like, just like this. You would assume that they would then help you out back. I've never had a situation where they don't then take a photo of you. And yeah, a lot of the time they're not the greatest photos, but if you have given them that bit of direction beforehand by taking their photo and they've seen you in action taking photos, then hopefully it will be at least a semi-decent photo that you would be wanting. And also tell them to take loads. Oh, there's nothing worse than when you ask someone to take your photo, they've taken one, and you're blinking or something, and then you find it too awkward to ask them to take another one. So when you give your phone or your camera to someone, say, can you just take like 20, please? <laughs> like, there's no, you should not be ashamed of that because you're never gonna see this person again anyway. But also you could carry around a tripod or just stick your phone or your camera onto something where it's propped up and then you can stick the self timer on it is also a good way to do things. But other than that, I just take selfies and I just try to get experimental with different angles and different poses and try to think of the shot in your head before you do it and what you would like to be doing in it and what would make the image a little bit more fun and more memorable. Is it safe to travel solo with your camera equipment? I am a photographer and will be taking my cameras. Any tips not to make myself stand out with it? So I had no problems carrying around my camera equipment, especially when I was in the Philippines. I did keep my stuff as concealed as I could. I would only get it out if I felt like I was in a safe environment. So if I was with a friend or somewhere where 
everyone had their cameras out kind of thing. You may well have noticed in the vlog series that a lot of the time I'm vlogging, I'm using my phone or my GoPro, and I'm either holding it really close to my face or I'm holding it down here, so you're kind of just looking at my chin. And I just find this is the best way to not draw attention to yourself and that's the way I like to do things. I personally wouldn't feel safe if I was by myself somewhere where not a lot of people had cameras out and stuff and I was holding my big Lumix GH5 out here talking to it like everyone is going to look at you. But when I'm not taking my camera equipment out with me in the daytime, I will always put it in the locker in the hostel. How to get by solo traveling without being able to ride a scooter, especially in Asia. Being able to ride a scooter is a very good skill in Asia, I must say. But not every single backpacker destination is a scooter destination. But if they are, then my first recommendation would be to find a friend who does know how to ride a scooter so you can ride on the back of theirs. Just make sure you always contribute to petrol because that's just a friendly, polite thing to do. If not, everywhere has tuk-tuks and tricycles and taxis and you can try Uber if they have it or Grab if you're in Manila and you can always get rides around like that or you can do a tour, but they're typically more expensive. How to not find it awkward eating alone. <laughs> so you have to think that no one else finds it weird that you're eating alone. I'm completely fine at breakfast and lunch. It's only if I have dinner by myself where I feel a bit like, ooh. But you just gotta remember, you just gotta remind yourself, no one else around you is finding it weird to look at you by yourself. I do recommend bringing something to entertain you, whether that be a magazine or a book or maybe your laptop and you can get some journaling done or if you have an actual journal and then you can write in it there. Or just bring your phone and your headphones, you can listen to some music or you can be editing pictures on your phone. Have something which keeps you busy and that might make you feel a little less awkward but just the key thing to remember is no one cares but yourself. When making meals in hostels, how do you keep it cost efficient slash low wastage? So I haven't really had to do this in ages because most hostels in Asia, Southeast Asia either don't have kitchens or it's just cheaper and better to eat out anyway. So this will mainly apply when you're in Australia or New Zealand or Europe. And there's a couple things that you can do which will make your life much easier. One is to share meals with other people in your hostel dorm room. You'll find that if there is a kitchen, which everyone in the hostel is using, people in your dorm room would probably be quite keen to share meals together. And then you can get away with buying a little bit more food, but splitting the cost and then yada, yada, yada. If not, if you are just completely solo and there's no one who wants to split food with you, which may well happen, I recommend getting a food bag, even if it's just a plastic bag, which is gonna be like your fridge bag. And then every time you arrive in a new destination, cause let's say you're in a destination for at least two or three days. That's generally the minimum you're gonna be staying somewhere. You can do your food shop, fill up the food bag, which will stay in the fridge. So you'll just buy a few essentials, which is gonna be able to make you a few meals. And then every day you make your meals, you use your essentials, and hopefully by the end of your stay there, you've used it all up if you do it correctly. And then you can pack that bag away, bring it to your next destination. Or if it is an actual like cooler bag, then you can just bring your food along with you as well, I guess. And the final topic is some social stuff and miscellaneous questions. Have you ever had a guy decide that they didn't want to date you because you travel solo? I have. <laughs> Do you know what? I think that is a reflection of the guy because they cannot handle a woman who is independent, does things for herself, and she don't need no man. She don't need no friends to travel because she can do stuff by herself. I think if a guy is saying, I don't wanna date you because you travel solo, they're intimidated. How to explain solo backpacking as a lifestyle, not just a constant holiday. <laughs> so I'm guessing someone's saying to you, why are you always on holiday? You've just gotta to explain to them that solo backpacking ain't easy a lot of the time. You go through ups and you go through downs and you are learning constantly. You're learning and growing probably way more than they are with whatever they're doing in their life. Do mid twenties people want to talk to 18 year olds when traveling? This is a really good question actually because this is something that kind of was going through my head when I was in the Philippines. So I'm 25 years old and I remember when I would meet some 18 year olds whilst traveling and initially when they said their age, I was like, oh my God, they're seven years younger than me. They're so young, I can't be hanging out with them. But then I transported myself back to 
18 year old Christiane and thought about what I thought about the 25 year olds that were travelling then and I didn't even bat an eyelid, I just thought oh this person's cool, they're travelling it didn't even slightly concern me that they were seven years older than me, it didn't feel like that as long as you got along well together, why should you care? and so back to 25 year old Christiane I didn't then care, I was just like Oh sweet, cool, you're 18 and you're travelling, that's awesome. If they're a nice person, then I got along with them really well. I travelled, you will meet soon in the vlogs Judith, who I travelled with for over a week later on in my Philippines adventures. And she's 20 years old, so there was a five year difference, but we got along so well, so why should it even matter? What is your opinion on solo hitchhiking as a woman? I think kudos to you. Like, I, I think that it's bloody great that women hitchhike. I haven't really tried it myself. I've hitchhiked once, but I was with a bunch of guys. It is something I would like to try more of in the future, but I've just never really given myself the opportunity because normally I'm a bit too much on a time restraint and I want to get somewhere. For me, I'm more scared of the unknown of what happens if I don't make it to my destination tonight and then it's going to throw everything off course and you have to be a completely open-minded, flexible person to hitchhiking and I completely respect people women who do it. But I haven't properly tried it myself, but never say never. For a first time solo travel, what do you think about cruises? I've never been on a cruise, so I can't really give you a respectful opinion on that. It's not the first thing that I would lean to if I thought of traveling solo somewhere. But I don't see why not if you really wanted to go and if you were willing to make the effort to meet people on board. I mean, I think I'm just thinking of the movies right now of cruises, but everyone gets to know everyone, don't they? So actually, yeah, you'd probably meet people quite easily. Yeah, I don't see why not. I'm really terrible at this. I've got no idea what a cruise is like. And finally, what do you wish you'd known before you went traveling for the first time? I wish that I had known it's not all daisies and roses the entire time. People who go solo traveling will often say to you and publicly and on their Instagram, oh my gosh, solo traveling is the best. I had the best time, I was never alone. And, and yeah, sure they had a great time, but the reality is I'm sure they were not absolutely having the time of their life the entire time. Especially if you're going on a longer trip, you are going to have lows and times where you feel lonely or times where you just feel a bit lost with what you're doing. And the important thing to know is that that's okay. If you start feeling like that on your first ever solo trip, you're not doing it wrong. You're not a bad solo traveller, you don't need to give up right there and then. You're not never going to make friends again. You make mistakes but you learn from them and you carry on or you change location and then you meet a new bunch of people who you really like. I think that that's what I would like to know before solo traveling. This has been the longest Q&A of my life. I hope I've managed to condense it down, but I've been filming for about an hour and a half, which is, no, almost two hours. Oh God. I hope you carry on watching the Philippines vlog series. I'm having so much fun creating it and I really hope it's encouraging and inspiring some of you to go out solo traveling because I really think that so many more people can do it and they just don't even realize it. So if I can be the person to make you go, yeah, do you know what? I think I can go on a solo trip. That will make me so happy. Um, my job here is done. Hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.